Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to The Vine. That's the online campus of the Riceville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors here. And it's my joy to welcome you to this video worship service today. Uh, Pastor Doug and Pastor Julia are not part of the video today because they are with a group in Spain walking the Camino, a medieval uh, pilgrimage route. And actually, as you're watching this, I will have just returned from leading a short-term mission team to El, Sal El Salvador that included eight people from our church. Let's be in prayer for Pastor Doug and Pastor Julia as they are walking across Spain this week. Once again, Welcome to our worship service today, and now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us pray. Lord God, we come together as Easter people. We come together as followers of the risen Christ who burst the bonds of death, who died on the cross, that we might be set free from our sins, that we might receive your grace and your love. And now, O oh Lord, as we gather together to worship you, May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. fire is meant for burning with a bright and warming flame so the church is meant for mission giving glory to God's name not to preach our creeds or customs but to build a bridge of care we join hands across the nation finding neighbors everywhere we are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on the way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving actions, we would show that Christ is life. In an humble, listening spirit, we would live to God's delight. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed, so may we be signs of oneness in earth's people's many hue. As a rainbow lights the heavens when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's new and glorious dawn. As we continue in our worship service, I'm going to lead us in our morning prayer. And as I pray, I'll be pausing at a certain point in the prayer in order to give you the opportunity to speak the names of persons that you would like to remember in prayer today. So let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, help us to empty ourselves of all that hinders our awareness of your presence with us. Fill us with the joy of knowing your continuing presence so that like the disciples who first encountered the resurrected Christ, we too might hasten to share this great good news with others. 
Holy God, you have called us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. We pray for those in need of healing, comfort, guidance, and peace. We pray for all those suffering loss and the fighting in Ukraine and the strife in many parts of the world. We especially pray today for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us in the path of discipleship so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and our deeds. And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, so now we also pray as God's confident children the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church, we believe that giving is important as an act of worship. We give back to God out of gratitude for what God has given us. You can worship God by giving offerings at a live worship service or by mailing checks to P.O. Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. You can also give through our church website or our cell phone app. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we ask you to accept all that we offer you today as an act of worship. May we learn to be witnesses to the gospel of your Son, Jesus, both in word and in actions. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now it's time for the children's message. And if you've got children or youth nearby who are not already watching this video, now's a great time to call them over because I've got some things to share with them. Hey guys, I'm Pastor David and I've got the children's sermon for today. Now, do you know what a transformer toy is? <laughs> what a silly question. Uh, most of you probably know a whole lot more about Transformers than I do. The original Transformers gave kids the power to change a toy from a robot into a car or a boat or a plane or something like that. And these toys have become so popular that they've been featured in comic books and TV shows and even full-length movies. The transformer that I want to tell you about today, though, is a real transformer who can totally change or transform your life. And that transformer is Jesus. Because if you believe in Jesus and you place your faith and trust in Him, He will transform your life into something that you never imagined. In our Bible reading today from Acts chapter 9, uh, you're going to hear about an example of the transforming power of Jesus. You see, many years ago, there was a man whose name was Saul. He was an enemy of the church, and he did many terrible things to the followers of Jesus. And one day, Saul was traveling to the city of Damascus to hunt for Christians so he could have them thrown into prison. On the way to Damascus, this bright light appeared. 
And Saul heard the voice of Jesus saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I have appeared to appoint you as my servant and to be a witness for me. After that meeting with Jesus, Saul's life transformed. In fact, he even got a new name. From that day on, he became known as Paul. And instead of trying to destroy the church, he went from town to town preaching and teaching about Jesus. People were amazed at the change that took place in Paul's life. Wherever he went, people were saying, the man who once persecuted us and was making all kinds of trouble for us is now preaching the faith that he once tried to destroy. That's what transforming power, the transforming power of Jesus can do. Wouldn't you like to let Jesus transform your life? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we want you to feel the transforming power of Jesus in our life. We give you thanks for the children and youth of our church and community. We pray your blessings on them and their families, on all who are watching this video today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today uh, comes from two different books in the New Testament. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. And then our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 36 through 38. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. This is the word of God for us the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our midst that our hearts might be prepared to hear your word. May your anointing be upon the one who preaches that his sins, though they be many and grievous, might not hinder your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Here's a notice from a few years ago from a newspaper, the Lewiston, Idaho Tribune. Here's what it said. The crossword puzzle, which should have appeared in today's Tribune, appeared instead in yesterday's, together with the answer to the puzzle that should have been printed yesterday. Therefore, the puzzle that should have appeared yesterday is in today's Tribune, together with the answer to Wednesday's puzzle. The puzzle for today and the answer to the one that should have been printed yesterday are reprinted. 
Or how about these instructions that came with the TV remote? If the first program action for today is not active yet, the current status of your installation depends, most probably, but not necessarily, on the last programmed action from yesterday. If the first programmed action for today is already active, the current status of your installation depends, most probably, but not necessarily, on the parameters programmed in the first programmed action for today. How can you follow such directions? How can you even understand what they're trying to say? What's my point? Well, my point is it's a lot easier to follow when you can understand what you're supposed to do. We should be happy that God gives us clear directions on serving Him. Very simply, God wants to work in and through our lives. And God is pretty clear on that. We just make it complicated because of our reluctance. Now, if God isn't working in and through your life, are you really a disciple of Jesus Christ? You know, somewhere along the way, we have mistakenly believed that you can be a good church member without being a disciple or a follower of Jesus. But can you really? Jesus founded His church on a set of ideals, including and centered on spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to the whole world and ministering to people in need, including those near and those far away. In fact, as odd as it may sound, the church is the only organization that exists primarily for those who are not a part of it, or at least not yet a part of it. Jesus intended His church to be salt and light in a bland and sin-darkened world. Jesus taught that you cannot serve both God and money. Jesus taught if you only love those who love you, you haven't really done anything. Jesus taught that we are to go into the whole world to spread the gospel. The church was never intended to be a social club where we show up to pay our dues, but then walk out the door and never give a thought to how God is working in our lives during the week. I'm sorry, but if God is not working in and through your life, how can you be a disciple of Jesus Christ? It's impossible to be a loyal and faithful member of a church and not be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. You see, God calls all of His followers to do something. Now that means that God calls some persons to serve as pastors, missionaries, and other types of ministers. God called me a very unlikely person, and God may be calling you as well. I encourage you to at least consider the possibility. God also calls people to be Sunday school teachers, to be communion stewards, to be choir members, to be ushers, to be committee members, to be youth activity chaperones, and so on and so forth. God calls people to go on mission trips. God calls people to help with local mission outreach. God calls people to financially support missions. God calls people to pray for others in crisis, to send encouraging notes to people who are grieving, and to serve God in thousands of other ways. God calls followers of Jesus to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. God calls us to put our faith into action and to actively serve God. Now, despite what you might think or what you may have heard at some point or another, it is not necessary to have certain skills or talents in order to serve God. Now we have in our church people who have all kinds of experience and talents. 
For example, we have a person who formerly was a radio newscaster and reporter in Florida. We have someone who was a DJ at a radio station. We have someone who worked as a lifeguard. We have someone who worked as a janitor. Someone who was a museum tour guide in an archaeology museum. We have someone who was a t-ball coach at a YMCA. We have someone who is a certified scuba diver. We have a person who has worked for a bank. Someone who worked under contract for the Centers for Disease Control. We have someone who has worked in a nuclear power plant with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We have someone who won a gold medal in a snow skiing race in Europe. We have someone who has worked as a security guard, someone who has taught history in college, and someone who has taught philosophy in college. We have someone who has scored standardized writing tests, including the MCAT or the Medical College Admission Test. We have someone who worked as a professional house painter and someone who worked as a librarian. What a varied set of experience we have in our church. And yet, all those things that I just listed are about one person. Just one person. <laughs> uh, your associate pastor for visitation. Yep. I have done all those things. Sounds like I had trouble keeping a job, right? <laughs> well, here's the real question. Did all of those things or any of those things qualify me to be a pastor? And the simple answer is no. In our scripture readings today, we read about two very different but very interesting individuals. The first person from Acts 9 was a man named Saul. Now, he wrote more books in the New Testament than anyone else. But when he was younger, he persecuted Christians, even though he was very religious. He was educated as a Jewish Pharisee, and he eventually helped spread the good news about Jesus beyond Palestine all the way to Rome and beyond, starting churches along the way. And along the way, they changed his name from Saul to Paul. The second person whom we read about in John 21 was Simon Peter. He was an illiterate fisherman with a fiery temper and often put his mouth in motion before his brain was in gear. But God used him first as the leading disciple of Jesus, then as a leader in the early church in Jerusalem, eventually leading the church at Rome. The Roman Catholic Church today recognizes Peter as the first pope. Now look at the differences between these two guys. Paul was educated. Peter was not. In fact, Peter was illiterate. That means he couldn't read or write. Paul was a planner and organizer. Peter was not. Paul had self-control. Peter definitely did not have that. Paul was a Roman citizen. Peter was not. And yet God worked through both lives to accomplish great things for God. So, what experience, gift, ability, or talent do you need to serve God? None. Zip. Zero. Nada. <laughs> when it comes to serving God, the testimony of Scripture and experience is that God does not necessarily call the equipped. God equips the called. If God is calling you to serve God in any way, God will equip you for that service. What God wants is your obedience, not your ability. What God wants is your availability, not your ability. Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher, told a story about a goose who was injured and who landed in a barnyard with some chickens. He played with the chickens and ate with the chickens. And after a while, 
That goose thought he was a chicken. One day, a flight of geese flew overhead, migrating to their home. They gave a honk up there in the sky, and the goose in the barnyard heard it. And Kierkegaard said, something stirred within the breast of that goose. Something called him to the skies. He began to flap the wings that he hadn't used in a long time. He rose a few feet into the air, and then he stopped. He settled back down again into the mud of the barnyard. He heard the call, but he settled for less. Let's be careful. Don't settle for less when it comes to God's call. Hear that God is calling you to faithful discipleship. And that includes being involved in Christian service in and through the life of your church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today for this video worship service. It's certainly our prayer that this service has been an encouragement and an inspiration to you in your life as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Jesus Christ as a faithful, authentic Christian. And now as we come to the end of our time together and we prepare to go forth back into our daily lives, let us go forth with the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.